Hello everybody, I'm Narlson, and welcome back to another episode where we're taking a look at the auto-crafting dropper. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at an auto-crafter that is capable of crafting any 2x2 two two crafting recipe. And in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at one in particular, which is the glowstone. Now this design comes to us from a member of the Auto Crafting Archive Discord community, his name is Chris, who also comes from the Radon Tech server. So thank you to him for giving me permission to make a tutorial about this. I will link both of those discords in the description below. And without further ado, let's get into it. Now, a little bit of preface. One of the reasons I'm doing this two by two auto crafting tutorial after I've already done a one by two, which is slightly more complicated for the redstone torch, is because this reintroduces a concept that we covered in the very first episode that has to do with signal strength out of the auto crafting dropper. So a lot of the principles early on are gonna be borrowed from what we just did with the redstone torch crafter, uh, but then you'll see that we're going to start reintroducing some of the signal strength based concepts and that will allow us to then evolve some of these contraptions to be even more complicated, uh, but more useful for your survival world. So let's get into it. To begin, we've set up our start and stop mechanism here. Pretty simple. We're going to put a block over here. Now we need the two pulses that we typically always need for any sort of two by something crafting recipe. And to do that, we always use a lamp. Not always, but in this particular case, we will use a lamp. We'll observe that lamp and we'll throw a note block here. From that note block, we'll put in our first ingredient dropper. This is where we're gonna put our glowstone. And this dropper here, we'll turn into the auto crafting dropper. And so very simply, when we turn this on, you can see we get two pulses from this particular observer. And in our auto crafting dropper, we already have the first two ingredients in place. So the next thing we need to worry about is the placeholder item, similar to the auto crafter that we made for the redstone torch. In this case, we only need one placeholder item. So we will take a signal from this note block here. We're actually gonna wire it up to a sticky piston and do the same thing that we did with the redstone torch crafter, which is to recycle the placeholder item. So we'll have a dropper facing up, which is facing into the placeholder dropper. We'll fill both of those. And then underneath, we will put a hopper connecting from the auto crafting dropper back into the dropper down here. And then just like before, we only want to take out our placeholder items. So we'll just fill that up with the placeholder item so that if I put in anything else, nothing goes through. But if I put in a placeholder item, you can see it immediately goes away. So we have ourselves a basic item filter. And just like before, one of the things we need to do is lock this hopper so the ingredients don't start disappearing immediately the second we start populating the auto crafting dropper. So we're gonna do that in a very similar way to what we did last time, which is to simply power it. And now, if I put ingredients into the dropper, even if they're the placeholder items, everything stays. So we want to inject one placeholder item at the end after the two glowstone dust have been dispensed into the auto crafting dropper. So we're going to do that through this mechanism here with the sticky piston connected to the observer. We're going to extend this out, add another sticky piston, and this sticky piston will be connected to an observer. We're going to skip one spot because when this fires initially, this observer is going to power this sticky piston, which will then extend, grab this observer, retract, and when it retracts, this observer will power the note block. The note block is going to weakly or indirectly power the dropper containing the placeholder items, which will put one into the auto crafting dropper. And to demonstrate that, we can see that we have everything that we need. So now we need to worry about getting the second row. Let me just go ahead and reset that. 
So to get the second row, we're going to reuse the initial dropper that contains the ingredients. And in order to achieve that, we're going to take a signal from the note block that has been triggered that lets us know when the placeholder item has been dispensed. And we are simply going to observe that signal line and repower the same block that is being powered by our start and stop switch here. And by doing so, when this particular observer fires, it's going to trigger the lamp and the lamp will trigger the whole thing to repeat itself. Now, it's not gonna continue that indefinitely, and that's why this particular piston is here, because the first time that it fires, we already know that it will retract this observer and give us one pulse for our placeholder item. And then the second time that it goes through, meaning when this observer fires and triggers the lamp mechanism again, when this observer extends and touches this piston, it's actually gonna push the observer out of the way, avoiding the powering of this note block, meaning that none of this circuitry is gonna be fired the second time. So if we place this, we can see that we have the entire crafting recipe we need. We just need to now unlock the hopper, get rid of the placeholder item, and then perform the crafting. And we can see that the observer that I was talking about is now back in place where it needs to be so the full system reset itself. Now here's where we get back to signal strength. So in this design, the crafting and the hopper unlocking is being controlled by signal strength coming out of the auto crafting dropper. And to remind people what that means, if I have an auto crafting dropper set up like this, and I take a comparator reading of the auto crafting dropper, or in this case, I'm taking the reading through the actual crafting table, and I throw down a piece of redstone dust, I have a texture pack on that'll show a signal strength. So you can see right now there's nothing in there, so we have a signal strength of zero. The second I start filling up an ingredients, so I'll put two in there, and see that the signal strength has gone up. And if I continue that pattern and put our entire crafting ingredient in, you can see that we have a signal strength of eight. And if the whole thing is full, we'll get the full signal strength of 15. And that's just one of those intrinsic properties of the auto crafting dropper. Uh, but we can use that to our advantage because if we get a signal strength of eight, we know that we have reached this many ingredients. We know that the auto crafting dropper has five total ingredients in, in place. And in this case, that's enough for us to want to trigger the actual craft and unlock the hopper. To, in order for us to trigger some sort of action based off of that, we're actually gonna use the comparator mode. So first of all, for those that already know how this works, this piece of redstone here is completely unnecessary. You can simply put a comparator directly into the side of another comparator for this to work. But for illustrative purposes, I'm gonna keep that there. And if we take something like a composter and put it behind the comparator there, and then fill it up. Let's just take something that's compostable. And we'll go ahead and fill this up to eight. We can see that we have eight coming into the side and we have eight coming out of this comparator here. And that's because I have a signal strength of eight. The second I take away one of these ingredients, you can see that this is turned off. So the way to think about this is that any signal coming into the side of the comparator acts as a threshold. So this line can't be crossed. So any, any signal flowing in the direction that I'm walking is gonna just stop if it's not greater than or equal to eight. And that's why I have that there. So you can see that to be true. It doesn't matter if I have seven, six, three, one, zero, it doesn't matter what I have in there. Nothing is getting through unless have the exact signal strength of eight or greater, in which case the signal activates. And that's the principle that this particular design uses in order to initiate the hopper unlocking as well as the crafting itself. So we are going to do the same setup up here. We're gonna take an output from the auto crafting dropper. We're going to feed in a signal strength of eight. 
from the side so we know when we have exactly what we need inside of the auto crafting dropper. To unlock the hopper, we're going to use some quasi connectivity. So all we're going to do is put an upside down sticky piston there into the redstone block, meaning when this particular comparator fires, it will push down the redstone block, unlocking this hopper long enough for us to remove the one ingredient that we want to remove. And simultaneously, we are going to put in an observer there, which will be extended at the same time and will trigger the auto crafting dropper. And so when we put all of these things together, we turn this on, we can see out pops a glowstone. Now this will work for any two by two recipe. So it could be a quartz block, it could be a plank, whatever it is that's two by two, just replace this ingredient with some other ingredient and it will work. So now we need to make this continuous. Well, that is very simple given the way that this design is put together. All we need to do is take a signal from this action of actually performing the craft. So that's why we've put a note block there. That will still power the dropper below. We're gonna observe that that's happened and output a signal to a line here. And now it's continuous, and that's because this observer is facing forward. Well, its face is facing forward. So when it is extended like this, the first time it's extended, it'll power the block, which triggers the lamp, which kicks the whole thing into motion. When this observer triggers this note block, it is picked up by this observer, which powers the signal line, which the original observer that started this whole thing will pick up and it will fire again. Thus, everything will be put back into motion and be continuous. So we can see that now by turning this on and out pops glowstone and more glowstone. So now it's running in continuous mode. And just that simply, we have now a two by two auto crafter that combines both pulse based design and signal strength based design. Now, this design from Chris doesn't end here. There's actually an attachment that we can add to it, which is gonna be reserved for the next video, where we're going to take a look at some extensions that we can add to both the redstone torch, as well as the two x two autocrafter to allow us to add some safety mechanisms in place. So once again, thank you to Chris for contributing his design and the members of the Radon Tech server, as well as the Auto Crafting Archive Discord server. And hopefully this was helpful, and I will see you next time. Bye.